Today, we are going to be making a Ray-Ban style eyeglass case, which is a very simple leather working thing that you can do if you're just a beginner, such as myself. The pattern is going to be one single piece of leather that is pretty small. To get it, all you have to do is trace out this shape right here, take a measurement from the bottom in the top, and then with a piece of string or something, measure from this point all the way along the side to this point, and then draw a sort of logarithmic arch across this line, and that will give you something like this pattern right here, which I will line up on this cutting board, this cutting mat. Each of these squares is an inch, so people charge like $15 on Etsy for this pattern, so here you go, take it for free. It's on me. If you would notice, there are little uh, parts where I have taped on more paper because I've made this before. And as you can see, there's these huge gaps on the sides that the original does not have. And for whatever reason, when I first made this a couple years ago, I thought that the pattern would need some sort of a corner cut off for it to work well, but it definitely doesn't. So I'm just going to do a straight line instead of the corners cut off that I did last time. Now, here are the... Here are the tools that I'm going to use for this project. And here are the tools that you actually need for this project. The only caveat to this is you don't need to use snap buttons. Ray-Ban uses snap buttons, but really you could use any button, Velcro, uh, any sort of fastener will do to just hold this thing shut. You don't need to buy like a 300 set of snaps if you're never gonna do this again. And as far as leather goes, now I used a chrome tanned leather for the one I made a couple years ago, and it's pretty good. But in my journey for making a new one, I have settled on using a chrome tanned leather that I'm going to have to dye, so you don't need dye or anything. Burnishing is kind of optional with any leather working, I think. And so is contact cement, which I always see people using, but I just don't care to make my things that strong. And as far as amount of leather you're going to need, I made this one with a one square foot sheet of leather that you can buy on like Amazon or any large leather distributor will probably just sell one foot squares. But I went and bought this. Which even if I zoom all the way out on my camera, uh, it's a pretty big sheet of leather. Now let's get started.
before we dye the leather, I am going to figure out how the stitching is going to go on the side and this side. So I'm just going to take it, fold it over, make sure that's all pinched together good, and just tiny mark. Now, we know that we can start making holes where the string is going to go through along this line and along this line. I'm not sure how deep into this corner I want to go. On this one, I went pretty far into the corner. So all I'm going to do is scribe out a line of where I'm going to put the stitches. And to get a even line from the outside edge, I'm going to use this tool. Which is totally optional. And there we are, all ready for dye. Okay, so now that that's dyed, and if you want to see how to dye leather, uh, go watch a different video, because I am not good at this. This was my first attempt at dyeing, and considering I did just black, and there's still a bunch of streakiness on the back side. I mean, no one's gonna see that, but pretty okay for being probably the easiest dye color to do. But hopefully now you can see these lines that I've scribed on here. The next step is going to be to sew this together. So we're gonna go ahead and fold this as it would lay. Put it down. Make sure these edges are nice and matched up. And then we're going to mark where our first hole is going to be. And just press through the leather with the awl. And I can see where that is on the other piece of leather. Press that into a full hole. And then we're going to continue up here to around right here until we're at the end of our stitching line we're going to make. And you're just going to make holes evenly spaced along this whole line. You can use the diamond stitching hole cutter thing. I don't feel like doing that, but I will use it to indent little holes along the line so that they are perfectly spread apart but this is totally unnecessary and if you don't want to buy a set of these which are, I mean they're cheap but not 100% necessary as an all would be Okay, so now that we have all of our holes looking fully, now is time to do the sewing. If you want to know how to sew, go find another video. Just kidding, I'll teach you how to do that since I kind of passed on the whole dyeing thing. Now the way I stitch is called saddle stitching, I believe, which requires some thread. I usually do about three times the length of whatever seam I am doing. And to attach the needle to the thread, I thread the needle through the eye and then have the needle pierce through the center of the cord, kind of close to the end. You could definitely do it less close. 
And then what I do is I melt the fibers down. And now that right there is not going anywhere. Usually people don't melt the fibers together and they just have more length on there, but I feel like this works pretty good. So what we're gonna do is start on about the third hole and go through to the other one. And this usually kills my fingers even if I can grip on the needle, so usually I'll just rip the needle through with some pliers. And we're going to go one hole towards the end. Well, even these up. Go one hole towards the edge. And now we're going to go with the other end through the same hole that this one just came through. And that is going to start our saddle stitch. So that's basically how we're going to do it every single time is it's like regular sewing of cloth as far as I know but you're going through the same hole twice in two different directions with the same string. So now we have we're at the very end and we're going to come back to where we started is right here and then go all the way to the end doing this and that is saddle stitching Now that we're at the last couple stitches, we're going to be ending the stitch, which is basically the opposite of how we started it. That is to say, you go to the end and then you come back a stitch or two. Now, to finish this off, you are going to, or well, how I do it, is I kind of just tie these together a little bit. Bam, tie them together. Use the knife and go ahead and cut it pretty short. Not too short, though. Make sure it's a nice and tight knot. And I'm gonna singe this all the way down. And singe that all the way down. And press it. And there we go. This one is not too pretty, but it does get the job done. And now we're gonna go on to the other side. Now that we are all stitched up, we just need to put the fasteners onto here, and I've marked out kind of where I think it's going to be on the center line of the case, and then kind of just center it as good as possible on here. Okay, and now that we have the snaps in, snaps together, and the leather is very stiff, so the little gap I was trying to fill up does look like it's closed quite a bit and once the leather kind of softens up it'll probably be better. Uh, maybe could have bumped this out a little bit more but you live and you learn I guess. <laughs> Anyways the last step is going to be burnishing the edges right here to really finish those up make them nice and smooth. Never done that before either, so let's try it now.
Okay, so the edges are all burnished. They came out pretty good for my first time, I'd say. I mean, I could definitely just keep going over it more, but I am not super concerned with having super smooth edges. Well, that's it. There is the Ray-Ban style eyeglass case. And if you're wondering why I made it black instead of brown like the original one, mix things up, easy to die, I'm guessing. Also, I just bought this PewDiePie phone case and it came with a microfiber cloth for some reason, so bam, that matches, I guess. 